I'm Jim Trudeau. I'm a senior applications engineer here at Cypress. And today we're going to be talking about the peripheral driver library. The PDL is a library of code that works for all FM parts, FM0+, FM3, and FM4, and allows you to create customized drivers for the FM portfolios. The PDL comes with code examples and startup and configuration files that allow you to create your custom projects for any FM part. And it also supports a multitude of IDEs. For example, the IAR Embedded Workbench, the Kyle Microvision, Atollic True Studio, and Win System IDE. But what's really cool is that the PSOC Creator IDE from Cypress supports some FM processors. And what we're going to do here is show you building a PSOC Creator project to write code and download it and drive the S6E1B8 starter kit that I have here on the desk. We assume you're familiar with PSOC Creator. If you'd like to learn more about PSOC Creator, you should see the awesome PSOC 101 videos that are available on the PSOC Creator webpage. So assuming that you know how to use Creator, let's go to it and see how it works for the PDL. What I've got up is a PSOC Creator project that I've started. We're going to use the RGB LED. So I've already got the pins to set up for that because that really has very little to do with the PDL. But we're going to use an analog to digital converter peripheral, an ADC, to read a signal from the potentiometer on the board, and that's going to drive the color of the LED. So for a low signal, we'll have blue. For a high signal, we'll have red. And if we're in between, we'll have the green LED show up. So to implement that in Creator, um, what I need to do is to drag the ADC component in. So over in the component catalog, you will see an FMX catalog. So if we select that, and then under analog, here's the ADC component. And you drag the ADC component into your design, and you're good to go. Now, the good news is that PSOC Creator components come with default values that are very reasonable. And in fact, we don't need to change anything on this component. But we're going to change one thing just for readability. We're going to change the name of it. So if you double click, you can edit the contents of the PDL ADC. And we're just going to change the name to My ADC and call that done. All of the tabs within this user interface allow you to set all of the options that configure the ADC to work the way that you want. For example, you can set however many channels you want to pull signals from. We're just using the one, and that's what the default value is. You can set up the scan to work a variety of ways. You can do a single scan or a repeating scan. We're just using a single scan. So as I said, the default values are fine for a simple application, and that's what we're going to use. All we've done is change the name. So we'll just click OK. So I've got my component named my ADC. The other thing we need to configure is the pins. So let's go to the pins, which is on the design-wide resources page. You can see I've already set up the pins for the LED, and the ADC requires two pins. The first one, the ADTG, is the pin for the timer trigger. And we're not using a timer. We're using software control. So we're just going to set that to auto assign. For the channel, this is what pin has the analog signal. And on this board, the potentiometer is on port 2, pin 0, or analog channel 19. So that's the pin that we're going to select, analog channel 19. And we're good to go. So that's done. I can now let Creator generate the code for me. PSOC Creator has generated the source code that's required based on the configuration that I set up for the FM components in the top design. There are some SimSys include files. There's the devices folder. The devices folder is all of the startup code that's required for this particular part. If I was targeting a different part, it would bring in the appropriate startup code for me. I don't need to worry about where that code is. It just appears. The drivers folder includes all of the source code that's necessary for the components that I put in the top design. So for example, here's adc.c. This is, in fact, the actual PDL source code that is used to drive the ADC. I'm 
using some pins, so GPIO.h has been brought in, as well as the other interrupts and PDL top level source code. All that happens automatically. I don't have to worry about it at all. It also configures each of the components that I have set up. So, for example, here is the file myadc config. Let's take a look at that. This is all the code that configures the PDL. To use the PDL, the high level process is you configure the peripheral, then you initialize it, start it, and use it. This is the configuration process done for you. You don't need to know the names of the fields. You don't need to know the registers. You don't need to know the bits. All you do is set the values in the ADC component, and Creator does the rest for you. By contrast, here's the code you don't have to write, because Creator did that for you. You don't need to create the configuration structures. You don't need to know what the names of all the fields are. You don't need to know what the options are. You set all of this inside the component in the PSOC Creator UI, and the rest is automatic. While Creator saves you that drudgery, it doesn't do everything for you. You still have to initialize, enable, and use the peripheral. When Creator generates the source code, it gives you an empty main.c file for you to place your code in. And I've already done that. So let's go to the top of that file and take a look at what happens. I've defined a couple of symbols for turning the LED on and off, and for splitting the range of the ADC into three levels so that we can control the color based on that. And then there's some code that calls the LED GPIO routines that Creator has generated for me to turn the LEDs on and off. So let's look at the main function. So we have a local variable, ADC data, and this will pull the 32-bit value out of the queue of information that's generated by the component. And then we will convert that into the actual 12-bit value that is the result of the actual uh, analog scan. Having done that, the first thing we do is we set up the LED so we turn it off to make sure it's not going to run. And then, remember, for the PDL, the configuration has been done for us by Creator. I need to initialize. So here's the call to initialize the ADC, and I need to pass in two parameters. One of them is my ADC underscore HW. This is the base hardware address for this peripheral, and that gives the PDL all the information it needs so that it can set all the registers and all the bits in those registers to make the peripheral behave properly. And it knows that because the second parameter is my ADC underscore config, and this is the configuration structure that PSOC Creator provides to me so that I don't have to write that code. And then we enable it. We call enable wait ready. These are PDL function calls. So this is the work that I have to do writing my code. And again, I pass in the base hardware address. And then let's look at the main loop. The first thing we do is we trigger a scan. So we're going to start reading what's the value on the potentiometer. And again, we pass in that hardware address. And then we wait till it's done. So we poll the status. And when the status comes back that the ADC is finished, I know that I've got data, so I read that data. This is a 32-bit value, and I can look at the documentation for that function call, and it tells me it returns a 32-bit value. And the API documentation for the PDL also tells me that if I call get scan data, it will pull the actual scan result out of that 32-bit data. And then I just change the LED based on the scan result. So we just divide that up by three. If it's low, it's blue. If it's high, it's red. If it's in the middle, it's green. So let's see how it works. In Creator, we can just click the Debug button, and that will compile all the code and flash the board. It takes a minute, but when it's done, we'll be stopped at the first line of main. And here we are, stopped at the first line of main. Let's just run it. So we'll resume execution, and the potentiometer is already set on low. We will crank it up, and as it goes up, when we hit the middle of the range, the LED turns green. And at the top of the range, it turns red. So that's a pretty simple blinky application. But the point we're making is that it's Creator that did a lot of the hard work for us. In the top design, you have components for all of the peripherals that are supported for the FM family. 
and to create an FM application using the PDL, all you need to do is to drag the components in that you need for your application and then set them up in the Creator UI. So what Creator gives you is the ability to easily pick a different FM target and to easily configure and modify the configuration for the PDL peripherals. Programming a microcontroller may not be all that easy, but the combination of the PDL and PSOC Creator sure makes it a lot easier. Thanks for watching.